All right, so we listed off the parameters that we discussed with our professor, and he told us that we need to look at which ones are specific to hydration. So there, apparently a few years ago, there was an article about 51 students at a commencement at ASU who had to wear their attire for 30 minutes before President Obama came to speak. And because of this, those students were then taken to the hospital afterwards. So basically he said, you know, uh, don't focus on, uh, on correlations between the pH, pH concentration and the hydration. He said that we should rather focus on intensity of the dehydration on individual people. Um, uh, you know, like different uh, people can have different uh, resistance to hydration and uh, age, gender, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and so on. So he wanted us to do more research online and like through articles to develop like a way to determine which which parameters are actually more reliable than which others to know like how specific we can get and choose like an optimal way to test hydration and also how we can validate so we have to he wants us to eventually meet with the doctor to go over and find out exactly how they measure dehydration so we can do something similar hopefully and then also have a way to actually test for hydration when we start developing our product. From this, <clears throat> we'll be able to, uh, once we develop our product, we'll be able to figure out exactly if uh, any specific person has any prior symptoms or anything else in order to uh, compensate on that end. So if it's a case of where they have some sort of um, disease or some uh, less resistance to dehydration will be able to compensate for that within the device and be able to accurately measure this and, accu and accurately measure the intensity of dehydration. Um, from meeting with these doctors, we'll be able to get uh, an insight on exactly how they do it and from they do it, uh, we can therefore implement that into the device. So to build off the prior conditions, um, he told us that when testing, we don't want to induce the symptoms that we are trying to figure out how to solve. So for example, if we were trying to solve um, issues for people with asthma, it's not gonna be effective for me to sit here and go <coughs> and see how the device works. However, if I was gonna test, if I was building something for asthma and I had people with coughing, uh, coughing related issues, then I could use them because their symptoms are similar to those things that I'm trying to treat. So as long as they're real, uh, we can, open our we can open up what we're willing to test and deal with those things so for example if i'm trying to figure out if i'm trying to deal with someone who's dehydrated maybe for example i might look at somebody who's a bit dizzy because they're dehydrated or someone who is walking uh in an in incorrect way because they're dehydrated and then try to treat those symptoms and then work my way back to the original problem and we also went over how we might possibly approach a doctor because he said that our best bet is to use our personal connections and if not, we have to be very prepared before we go and cold email actual doctors who are strangers to us and see um, whether or not we can get them interested in working with us. And he also brought up a good point that we should have, he wanted us to prepare like two papers or two slides on a PowerPoint so we have like, uh, we uh, have evidence that we did research so that when we go see the doctor, we're not just asking him random blank questions. We have, we look like we did our research and it, it makes the doctor's time more worthwhile. That yeah. one? The, yeah. the cancer? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so basically we have up to the first week of November to do the first iterations by doing research and talking to doctors. I think probably also talking to doctors, it will be a good thing to, uh, to have a questionnaire ready or you know things that we want to know uh, so that way we don't waste the doctor time. Uh, the second iteration we are doing to find discrepancies in different sources of information. Then we will identify which ones are most correct. Then in December we will look, uh, look at feasibility, uh, which ones can we adopt, which ones can we should we put on, on the side. from at this point we'll be able to update this scan chart to um, allow us to really more accurately measure our time 
be able to not only uh, help out our on our end, but as well as our advisors end. So basically, it actually like pushed most of like the actual measurements and calculations to next semester. So Shay wants us to focus a lot more on just basic research for this semester before we decide on what exactly we want to do. He also said that funding is something that we shouldn't be as focused on now as we should be next semester once we figure out what it is we need to fund. And then... thing that we also need to learn from doctors is to learn the uh, what is the established process or protocol that the doctor used to assess the hy uh, hydration and then you know we look at those parameters or that process and maybe we can also uh, collect information from that uh, again uh, Shed talks about uh, you know that hydration symptoms may occur it may happen differently in um, uh, on different individuals by, uh, by age sex or BMI perhaps uh, also, he also point us into maybe look at uh, eye symptoms if we have the possibility. But that was could be another option. Um, that was uh, pretty much right. That's pretty much. Yep. That was so this week. that's what we've done up until this point. Until next time.